There are a number of different um, UV detectors and UV meters out there available on the market. Um, if you're doing uh, quality control in UV phototherapy, the most likely thing you're going to be using is a broadband uh, radiometer. Um, but you might also have an array spectrometer, which gives you spectral information on your UV source. Or indeed, you might have a scanning um, spectral radiometer uh, available too. If we take a look at some of the different types of meters um, that we have available. So the most common type of um, detector probably in the UK is the international um, light detectors uh, and systems as well. Um, this is the IL1400. Uh, a. Um, probably most UV phototherapy centres will have one of these. They're not commercially available anymore. They've been replaced by the ILT2400, which is a digital version of the IL1400. Now, both meters um, can accept uh, the different types of detector. So this is the common type of um, detector with the IL1400. It comes in several different parts and what we'll do is I'll show you the different parts of the detector. On the top you have a cosine diffuser. So this is the cosine diffuser here. This one's Teflon TD. Um, these are the ones that are commonly available now. In the past you also had quartz diffusers, although the quartz ones don't have as good an angular response as the Teflon diffuser ones do. The system also has a filter normally attached to it. And this one in here is a UVB1 filter. And that restricts the radiation that enters the detector, which is a broadband detector at the bottom there as well. Okay. So all of your um, detectors that you have, regardless of the make, will have these three components. Um, the only reason it might not have the filter is if the detector itself is limited in its wavelength range. So some other uh, available systems on the market, you have the Waldman unit here. Um, that measures both UVA and UVB. I should say that for the international light systems, you'll often have different detector, filter, diffuser combinations, depending on the type of uh, UV or visible radiation that you're measuring. Gigahertz Optic are another supplier. Um, they also do systems um, such as, as the unit here. This one in particular also comes with uh, a radiance attachment. So this is a tube. It's 200 millimeters in length um, with an aperture at the front which limits the uh, solid angle that the detector views um, when the detector is slotted into the end of the tube there and that can be helpful or, or is required if you want to measure radiance rather than irradiance. Um, but that's a, another topic entirely. Then finally, um, you might have a diode array system. Here's an ocean optics system here. Um, this will give you spectral information. Diode array systems are relatively cheap uh, in that they cost them um, a few hundred to a, a few thousand pounds. Um, but it's very important, although they're very easy to use, they are require a lot of calibration uh, and you need to compensate for a lot of different um, uncertainties and stray light and um, various other angular response um, components as well. So it's important not to just pick up uh, and use one. So if you're going to use a uh, uh, broadband uh, radiometer, um, it's very important to have it calibrated appropriately. As it's a, a broadband system, it can't tell which wavelengths of light are entering the detector. And it also doesn't have a flat response to it, so it's not equally responsive to all wavelengths. So it's very, very important that you have an optical calibration and that that optical calibration is appropriate to the light source you're going to measure because the change in sensitivity, it will change for each of the light sources that you're going to measure. 
So if you buy the system brand new, it will often come with an electrical calibration, but not necessarily an optical calibration. If you've paid extra for the optical calibration, check what it's been calibrated against. Often it can be calibrated against just a single wavelength. So if it's, uh, it might be 312 nanometers, which may or may not be okay if you're measuring TL1 lamps, um, or if you're using UVA, make sure it's been calibrated against the type of lamps that are actually used in your phototherapy cabinet. A way to tell if a, a calibration uh, provider is uh, good or not is to look and see whether or not they have ISO 17025 accreditation. And you can check that out on the UCAS website. There are currently two sites in the UK that do that. One in uh, St Thomas's Hospital in London and one up in Dundee as well. The whole uh, purpose of calibrating a radiometer is to have traceability back to national standards, um, such that when we measure irradiance here in the UK, it's the same uh, milliwatts per centimetre squared that would be measured in France or in Europe or Asia or America. And in order to have that traceability, your calibration laboratory has to have um, traceability back to one of the National Measurement Institutes. In the UK, that National Measurement Institute is the National Physical Laboratory, um, but there are others throughout the world, such as PTB in Germany, LNE in France, and NIST over in America. Now, each of these uh, centres, um, they regularly compare themselves against each other, so you can be assured that if you have traceability to one of these centres, that within a given uncertainty, that should be globally applicable.